This man is pleading for his life. I entirely beg you, people and government of the DPR Korea, for your forgiveness. He committed a crime in one of the most dangerous countries on the planet, the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea. But it's what happened after he was arrested that shocked the world. This is his story. Meet Otto Warmbier, an all-American young guy from Ohio. He grew up like many young American men. He graduated second highest in his class at high school, and when it came time for him to go to college, he decided to study abroad in Hong Kong. In 2016, while studying in Hong Kong, he got a very rare opportunity the chance to visit the most closed-off country on the planet. He got invited to take a tour of North Korea. He booked it with a company named Young Pioneer Tours, their slogan being, we take you to destinations your mother would rather you stayed away from. Otto was curious about North Korean culture, and wanted to meet the people of this hermit state. So on December 29th, 2015, he flew from Hong Kong to Beijing and then into North Korea. He was with a fairly large tour group, which included 10 other US citizens. They had planned to spend five days in North Korea. They saw the sights, had lots of food and drinks, and witnessed the amazing New Year's Eve fireworks show in Pyongyang. At 2am on New Year's Day, Otto attempted a challenge many tourists had done before. That is, the fifth floor challenge. Otto and his tour group had been staying at the Yanggakdo Hotel in North Korea. The hotel is famous for its secretive fifth floor. This is the staff only floor. By trekking the elevator, many tourists have gone to this secret floor before. It has the staff living quarters and propaganda posters all over it. It's very different from the rest of the hotel. It also has the hotel surveillance center in it as well. Every room of the hotel has listening devices and cameras inside them. Normally when tourists are caught on the fifth floor, they're simply told to leave. They pretend to be confused tourists and they don't get in any trouble. But that was not the case with Otto Warmbier. Otto decided to take one of the propaganda posters in the staff only area as a rare souvenir. He did this at around 2am on New Year's Day. Otto continued his trip and everything went as normal. That was until the 2nd of January 2016. Otto and his tour group were at Pyongyang International Airport. They were about to get on their plane to leave. But that's when two guards came over and simply tapped Otto on the shoulder. They said no words, but they made it clear Otto had to go with them. At the time, one of Otto's friends on the tour group said, well, that's the last we'll ever see of you. Him and Otto both laughed because they assumed it was simply a security check. But there was a dark irony to what his friend had just said, because it was in fact the last time anyone on that tour group saw Otto ever again. The rest of the tour group left the country, but Otto remained in North Korea. News of his arrest was soon broadcast on North Korean TV. North Korea's news agency, KCNA, simply said he'd been arrested for a hostile act against the state. For six weeks, they refused to even say what he'd done wrong. That was until February 29th, 2016. A very bizarre press conference was held about Otto. Otto and many North Korean police were present. Otto had to read from a prepared statement that was written for him. He admitted to stealing a propaganda poster from the hotel's fifth floor. I understand the severity of my crime. I have been very impressed by the Korean government's humanitarian treatment of severe criminals like myself. His confession may have been forced, but he was clearly terrified about what his fate may be. He begged the North Korean government and people for forgiveness. I entirely beg you, people and government of the DPR Korea, for your forgiveness. But none of this was enough. He was charged with the crime of subversion. But despite all of his pleading, Otto was given no sympathy from the North Korean courts. For simply taking a poster, he was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor. He would do this at one of North Korea's famous prison camps. Back in the US, the American government was trying to get Otto freed. Otto's parents spoke out many times in the media, saying that the government was not doing enough. They said they had asked Obama and the Department of State, but they had been no help whatsoever. 
their son was still stuck in a North Korean prison, unable to contact anyone on the outside. Otto remained in prison for about one and a half years. But behind the scenes, negotiations between the new American government and North Korea were taking place. And soon it was announced that North Korea had released Otto. You may think that's where the story ends, but it's after Otto's release when things really went downhill. A North Korean spokesperson said Otto had contracted foodborne botulism and had fallen into a coma after taking a sleeping pill. North Korea had not tried to help Otto and had simply ignored his medical condition. Eventually, Otto was taken to Pyongyang Friendship Hospital. A special plane from the US was then flown to North Korea to take Otto back home. Otto was still in a coma on this medical plane. The plane landed in the USA and Otto was back on American soil, but he was still in a coma and there were no signs of recovery. After a few days, Otto began breathing on his own and blinking his eyes but he was still in a vegetative state, meaning that he had no awareness of his surroundings. He also couldn't move nor speak. According to a brain scan, he had lost lots of brain tissue. This likely meant Otto was deprived of oxygen. Many believe this was a form of torture used on him by North Korea. Otto's father held a press conference saying he wasn't sure what had happened to his son, but he stated that he did not believe anything the North Korean government had told him. On June 19th, 2017 at 2.20 p.m., Otto Warmbier passed away. He was 22 years old. His family released a statement expressing their sadness, and President Trump blamed North Korea for Otto's passing. North Korea responded saying that they were the biggest victim of Otto's passing and said that it was all a smear campaign against North Korea. According to many experts, North Korea's treatment of Otto caused him to pass away. Otto may have stolen a propaganda poster, but North Korea stole his life. A funeral was held for Otto at his high school, more than 2,500 people attended, and many politicians all over the US condemned North Korea. This led to the US government banning any American tourists from visiting North Korea. In April 2018, Otto's parents sued the North Korean government. They accused North Korea of torture and murder. North Korea did not contest the case in court, and because they did not respond, they were found guilty by default judgment. North Korea was ordered to pay $501 million in damages to Otto's parents. But of course, there's no real way to enforce this. However, in 2019, a North Korean cargo ship was seized. This was then sold on by the US government with the proceeds going to Otto's family. But no amount of money can ever bring Otto back. Otto's parents have to live with the fact that their son's life was taken by the North Korean government. North Korea is a fascinating country, and the ordinary citizens are probably great decent people, but it's sad they have to live under such an authoritarian and evil government. Hopefully one day things will change in the Hermit Kingdom, but right now the Kim Dynasty continues to rule North Korea with an iron fist. But now it's time for you to make your voice heard. Would you like to visit North Korea, or are you too scared after hearing stories like this? If you want to see my short videos, then check out my second channel. I've been Charlie, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already then what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.